Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we're going to be looking at three Pokemon that have very, very nice abilities. I'm not really loving any of these guys as attackers, but ladies and gentlemen, that's not the point. Not for these Pokemon. The point of these Pokemon is, oh my goodness, look at the abilities. And we need to start with Greedent. Because, oh my goodness, look at the ability. Now, our translations, of course, do come from the lovely Antoine Boulet. Something you probably should have guessed by now. And honestly, it's not like Greedent's never had an ability before. The first Greedent we ever had back in Rebel Clash had a really nice ability that searched out a Pokemon tool. This Greedent... Oh, there's a lot to like about this Greedent. Now, in terms of the basics, 120 HP is actually even worse now than it used to be. Because it's a key number. You want 130. But Rapid Strike Urshifu hits 120 to two Pokemon. So it can easily take it out on the bench. Nice low retreat cost is nice. Weakness of fighting is not good. And being a colorless Pokemon means you're hitting nothing for weakness. But you can see the attack there is free colorless energy, 90 damage. When you're not hitting for weakness, that's a bad attack. And it's a last we will speak of it. But the good news is, ladies and gentlemen, we don't need to worry about weakness and attacking and any of that rubbish. Because we've got the ability Brazen Tail. Energy attached to your Pokemon in play... Cannot be discarded, nor put back into your hand or deck by effects of your opponent's item and supporter cards. Yet, all of those items and supporter cards that would get rid of energy, whether it would go into your deck, or your hand, or the discard pile, don't worry about it, ladies and gentlemen. Do not worry about it. Greedent has absolutely got your back. And this could potentially be huge. You know, we got Crushing Hammer at the moment. That gets rid of energy. This will stop it. We've got Team Yell Grunt that puts an energy back into your hand. This will stop it. We've got that fan of Waves that just came out that puts a special energy onto the bottom of your deck. Well, this stops that as well. And there will be others one would imagine in the future. There are probably going to be other things coming along in the future that will get rid of your energy. Now, attacks will still do it. So, something like a Galarian Zapdos that discards a special energy before doing damage. That is an attack, not an item or supporter card. So, that would absolutely still get rid of your special energy. That's fine. But this is stopping all of those decks that aim to do it. And bearing in mind we've got those control decks, things that used to be Auron Guru, and nowadays they're pretty much the best they've got is, um, well, Excadrill. And I love Excadrill, but it's, it's not the same. I think most people will agree. Those kind of decks love just reusing these cards to get rid of energy. Well, no more, ladies and gentlemen. No more. Greedent is huge. Now, not every deck is going to be able to use it. A deck like Eternatus, if it can survive all of the hideous counters against it, would love this. Because it's a two energy attack and Crushing Hammer can really punish Eternatus. But the thing is, Eternatus has to only play Darkness Pokemon. To, it, it's just not going to work, alright? It's just not a valid thing. Sad, but true. But there are so many other decks that can. And we're only talking about a stage one here. We're not talking about some card that is going to take a huge amount of time and effort to get into play. It is just a stage one. That is not too bad. And it really is as simple as this. If you are one of those decks that really wants to try and protect your energy, if you're a multiple energy deck that is actually quite vulnerable to things like Crushing Hammer... You need this. Other decks probably aren't going to play it. If you're a single energy deck, you probably don't care. Because you can just reattach that energy and you're good to go. But what we've got here is a stage one Pokemon that gives you an absolutely perfect counter to all of these things like Crushing Hammer, Fan of Waves, and whatever else comes out in the future. I'm giving this between four and five Wossies. We don't give half Wossies. That would be barbaric. Honestly, I think this is a phenomenal card. And I know it's a random stage one tech. 
But I really do think this is the kind of random stage one tech that a whole bunch of people are going to end up playing. It's not for every deck, all right? But the decks it is for, ho, 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 they are going to make beautiful, beautiful use of it. Now, we've also got ourselves a new Frost Lass coming. And Frost Lass sounds like Frost Moth. Frost Moth accelerates energy. Hey! So does Frostlass, although maybe not quite as well. Now, if we look at the basics here, we do actually have 90 HP, which is genuinely relevant because it means that it's an evolved Pokemon, but you can still search it out with Level Ball, which is, of course, back in the format as of Battle Styles, which is kind of awesome. We got a low retreat cost of one, and the weakness to metal is largely irrelevant because you got 90 HP. And I could talk about the fact you're hitting weakness on Victini VMAX and you can use Frostmoth to accelerate energy, but honestly, nobody really cares, ladies and gentlemen. Because you got one attack here, 90 damage, and you can't attack next turn. It's not even enough to get a Center Scorch V. I mean, goodness, Victini V is weak at 190, and you're still 10 damage away. And yeah, I know there are ways to do that extra 10 damage. But I'm telling you, if I'm putting two energy on a stage one and hitting a Pokemon V for weakness, and I'm still having to find another way to do an extra 10 damage, I'm not loving it. But the ability here, oh, the ability we like. When you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may attach a water energy from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon in play. And I really, really like this essentially, yes, it's a one-shot deal, okay? It's when you evolve up, fine. But it's not really when you evolve up, because we've got Scoop up now. I mean, okay, it clearly is when you evolve up, all right? But what I mean is, it basically turns Scoop up now into Aqua Patch, except you can attach to the active, not just to the bench. Now, it is only water energy, but it is not only water Pokemon, which incidentally is another bonus it has over the aforementioned Aqua Patch. You can attach a water energy to any of your Pokemon in play, water or not, active or not. And I adore this. Without Scoop Up now, I don't like it. If this is just a stage one that I evolve up and get one extra energy, frankly, it's not good enough. It's too weak. It's not going to work. And I think we kind of need to avoid it and ignore it and just move on with our lives. But because we've got Scoop Up Net here, it means that we can start mucking about. And essentially, and I think you need to play it with Scoop Up Net, let's be clear. But I think if you're playing it with Scoop Up Net, then essentially what you've got is five extra energy. One when you evolve up initially, and then four more with Scoop Up Net. Now, obviously, with Scoop Up Net, you essentially scoop it up. Next turn, you bench the basic. Then you evolve in two turns time. The other option here is that you play a 2-2 line, and then you essentially use Scoop Up Net to dance between them. So you play Scoop Up Net on one, and then you evolve up the one that was just on your bench. And then you bench the basic, and then next turn you scoop up net, and round and round and round and round we go, ladies and gentlemen. And I love it. I really think this is a good, a really good ability. So I think once again, I'm going to have to give it between four and five Wossies. We don't give half Wossies. That would be barbaric. Yeah, I know it's on a stage one, and yeah, I know you've got to use scoop up net, and yeah, I know Frostmoth is a thing. Although, incidentally, this will last one more format than Frostmoth. So Frostmoth will rotate out kind of a year before this, and this will be left. But the fact of the matter is, we've seen that energy acceleration is generally always good. And this is energy acceleration. So I rather think that at some point, it is going to end up being really good. So we've already looked at two abilities that I have been, let's say, very enthusiastic about. Can we have one more? Well, the good news is, it's Porygon Z. And I love me some Porygon, ladies and gentlemen. Porygon is awesome. So Porygon Z then... I mean, if we have a little bit of a look at the basics here, it's still not particularly um, exciting. 140 for a stage two is not good. It's got a weakness to fighting. It's not looking great. 
Now, to be fair, I actually do like the attack on Porygon for about five minutes. Because for free colorless energy, you do 170 damage, and you discard two energy from this Pokemon. Now, for about six weeks between this coming out in Chilling Rain and the rotation, we are going to have Triple Acceleration Energy. And Triple Acceleration Energy will pay this attack in one go, because you're an evolved Pokemon. And Triple Acceleration just naturally discards at the end of your turn, but you have to discard anyway, so you really don't care here. And this actually becomes kind of beautiful kind of quickly. Because what you can do is attach this... Hit for 170, and then get on with your life. You lose the energy, but it doesn't matter. And 170 is enough to get a KO on something like a Dedenne. Now, it's not perfect, of course. You are 10 damage away from getting a KO on a Crobat. And post-rotation, we're going to move from Dedenne to full Crobat. And we're going to lose triple acceleration at the rotation. And then we're going to have twin energy, but that won't pay it in one go. So it's not ideal, unfortunately. I think pre-rotation, this attack totally works. I think post-rotation, it proper job runs out of steam. And that's a little bit sad. It's not the end of the world. But I do think this is a way, way better attack if we can be using it pre-rotation. But you've still got 170 damage for free colorless energy. It works with any energy acceleration. This is something to bear in mind. We're playing it for the ability, but the attack is kind of cool. Oh, speaking of the ability, once during your turn, when you attach an energy from your hand to this Pokemon, you may leave your opponent's active Pokemon confused. Yeah, that's kind of cool, ladies and gentlemen. And the thing is, you don't need to be able to get a one-hit KO here. Because if you're attacking with Porygon, you can happily two-hit KO, knowing that they'll be confused in the meantime. And of course, this is attaching from hand. So if you use Frostlass to attach from the discard, no, not going to work. If you use Frost Moth, it's extra attachments, but it is from your hand. So it totally works. I know. I like this, ladies and gentlemen. I think this is the weakest of the three we've looked at. I think I've got to be honest with you about that one. But I don't really care. And I am going to like Porygon more than your average person. Porygon was my original favorite Pokemon. It is still my second favorite Pokemon out of all the hundreds we've got. But the fact of the matter is, you got automatic paralysis and an attack that does a pretty good amount of damage. I mean, it will get a KO on pretty much any single prize Pokemon and some of your weaker multiple prize Pokemon. And you're combining it with confusion as well. Tell me that doesn't sound like fun, ladies and gentlemen. Tell me that doesn't sound like fun. I'm giving it between three and four Wossies because I still don't think it is an absolute powerhouse card. There are significant disadvantages. I understand that. But I honestly don't particularly care because I think it's really fun. And it is definitely one that I want to be having a play around with. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you need to know. Those are the new Pokemon with good abilities. And now it's over to you guys. I want to know what you think about all three of these cards. So let me know in the comment section. Good us. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, And Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.